All right, now to the fun part, all this exciting equipment that is uh, new to us, and we would love to share it with you. All right, so we've talked about the Arise Access to Inclusion Plan and the six approaches that we've identified to uh, adapting sports for the blind and visually impaired. And so we thought we would show you some of the great um, things that you can use to meet those six approaches or use during those six approaches. And so uh, as we go through, we're gonna give you examples of how you might use different things with different sports and also get you an idea of uh, what equipment to use. So our first of six approaches, if you remember, is contrast. So to start off with that, we have a couple different types of tape here. We've got um, a purple and we have a blue and a black. So those can be used as used definitely for contrast. They have different colors such as uh, yellow, white, uh, if you have a dark background that you're trying to contrast with a light color and obviously vice versa with the colors we have here. Right and so as we talked about earlier this is gymnasium tape. Uh, so with the gymnasium tape as we talked about earlier when you use this um, the backing, the sticking on the backing will not leave any sticky residue on a floor um, if you use it to do things with the floor. If you are doing um, putting it on a ball it's not going to leave it all sticky and that sort of thing. So we'll show you some applications for that but that's uh, the wonderful thing about the gymnasium tape, vinyl tape. You can also get of course painters tape um, depending on what you're doing, you could do duct tape and other things since it has different colors to it. So that's one um, example of contrast. So let's go on and let's move on to our second, which is audio. Um, and we'll probably spend a few minutes here. Yeah, definitely. So we got a lot of great audio things. Let's start with some of the balls that we have. Um, different types of balls. There's all kinds as we've talked about previously. There are balls with rattles. There's a, there are balls with bells beeping balls. So let's just go through what we got. So we have right here is, it just has, sounds to me like it has a single bell in it. And this is a basketball. Um, I believe they said that this is, is your standard Wilson basketball. The only adaptation is that it has the bell in it. Great. Um, I have here a volleyball with a very loud bell in it as well. Very loud. Um, and it's just like your standard volleyball. This one's, um, Got, it's white with some colors on it, um, different. I believe that one was that yellow. Um, oh, okay, this is the high contrast ball. Yes. Okay, so this is the high contrast ball uh, with bell in it. So now we're combining two approaches with it. Uh, it's a nice color and, um, and it's got different specks of colors on it as well. So that's a volleyball. I didn't cram my colors, so. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, what do you got? Uh, I actually have another bell. This is a soccer, soccer ball with bells in it. So it seem, seems to be a theme here. We're getting the bells out of the way. Right, yeah. All right. And then I have here a, a rattle. As you can hear, it's a, a lot different, but it's the same soccer ball. Uh, let's see. It's a little bit, maybe a little smaller. This particular one is probably a junior ball. Um, this is probably a regular size. Let's of these out of the way. Or? Sure, go to it. So, um, those are bell balls with bells. Now, they have balls with beepers. So, I have here a beeping baseball. Soft, it's a it's softball soft size, excuse me. And it has a pin in it. And when you're ready to play, you just pull the pin out. And it continues to beep. Until Ricky puts the pin back in. So this is a beeping baseball. It's, used it's more in softball size, really. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's bigger. It's a, it's definitely softball size. Very hard as as a softball or baseball is. So um, that's one type of ball with a beeper. All right, and then we have um, this is a kickball. It is bright red, so good for contrast, and it is also a beeping ball. So it makes that loud. Continuous beat. Yeah, 
And the, the thing we, we like about this um, kickball is that it's foam. So it's, it's very soft. Right, so you do not have to be fearful of being out in the field and being like, oh, it doesn't hit me, oh, it doesn't hit me. This one's not gonna hurt if it does. Another use for this, and I'm still trying to develop this all out fully, but using several of these uh, in a gymnasium or uh, in a field, maybe for dodgeball, could be a way to modify uh, dodgeball a little bit using these because again they're foam they don't hurt they hit you um, so that's good what else we got as far as we have another bell there did we uh did... right there you had a hand on it i thought we already did this this is the volleyball oh oh, no, this oh my one, favorite, your favorite. One. this is my favorite ball out of all this is a goal ball so g-o-a-l-b-a-l-l -L -L. um we're uh three on three sport and um it's a specific sport that was designed for the blind and visually impaired, such as the beat kickball, beat baseball, uh, five-a-side soccer with a soccer ball. These are all sports that are, are already designed specifically for blind and visually impaired. Um, this is actually started after World War II, Go Ball was, um, as a rehabilitation activity for wounded veterans. And then it turned into a Paralympic sport um, and again, it's three on three. The object of the game is to roll the ball across the court into the other, uh, other team's goal. The other team is laying out on the floor uh, to block the ball and uh, everybody has a blindfold on so no one can see. So anyway, this is an exclusive. Right, back to audio. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. So, so that's this is a, my favorite. I, I understand. Um, your other favorite, uh, we do not have out here. Okay. So, this is another beeping. It is a soccer ball. It's uh, new to us. We haven't really seen one of these yet uh, until we just got this one in. And it has got a toggle inside of it. So, it has a beep that you can follow along while you play soccer. Right. And the other thing and about it's this... it's soft as well. It's, yeah, it's a foam ball. So, this one could be used for dodgeball as well. Yeah. Yep. All right. So, uh, so we're going to move on to other, uh, these other two balls we have back here. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, now you get one and I'll get one. All right. So these are the same sort of style. Um, this one is a red and this one is a yellow. So they're different colors and they have different sounds. Mm -hmm. These are made out of foam, but this is a very hard foam. So... Inside, this would not be a dodge I would say this is not a dodgeball. <laughs> it's not even a kicking ball, no. in my opinion. This would be a rolling back and forth. So if it's, um, let's say, if you're like me and you're totally blind, but you have a sighted child and you wanted to roll the ball back and forth, this is the ball for you. Um, so these are, um, will we be able to tell what they are before we turn them on as far as their names? I think you have the boing. All right, so we're going to see if I have the boing based on the sound. But there's a toggle switch inside. You have a little uh, finger hole you here. You put put the uh, put your finger in. I do have the boing. So this is the boinging ball. Um, you flip the toggle one way, and it makes uh, louder or softer sound. I would say inside voice, uh, outside voice, inside voice. <laughs> All right, and this one is the techno ball, and it also also has the same feature of the inside voice and outside voice. So these are uh, purchased. These p two particular balls are purchased specifically from um, APH. Is that correct? I think so. Yes. Yes, that's from APH. Some of these other things can be found at various other places, including APH, uh, Braille Superstore, Maxi Aids. Aids, Independent Living Aids. Yeah. So um, all these folks should and have... And the goal ball is USABA. Yeah, USABA for the goal ball. All right, so... Oh, and the kickball is Judy Bird. Judy Bird and the National Beat Baseball, I mean, uh, Beat Kickball Association. Yeah. And, and the baseball... Denver um, Beat Baseball Association. Yep. <laughs> now, if you can't remember all this stuff, you can make sure and uh, contact us afterwards. We'll be more than happy to provide you with contact information for any of these uh, companies and agencies. And just a reminder, we don't um, 
we don't promote any of any specific one. Uh, we that's why we put out a variety here, and uh, so all the companies are doing uh, really great stuff with with some of this stuff. Um, how about that uh, audio thing that you have? The audio things you have there to your left, as far as um, the boxes and. Okay, there's that first. Okay. One last kind of um, in the audio realm there of toys, I guess. Yeah, so what I have here in my hand is an Easter egg. It's a large plastic Easter egg, um, and it has a little button on it. So it just beeps like that. I know most of us are going to be a little too old to want to do an Easter egg hunt, but um, you know somebody may have a child who's visually impaired and wants to play with them, or I mean, who knows? Grandma and Grandpa might want to get out there and do the Easter egg hunt too. Who That's knows? right. And one of the things that I just played around with it to see what you could do, if you open it up, um, there is a sound source on the bottom half of the egg, and it gets a little louder when you take the um, when you take the egg off, but you also have um, the other the top part where you could put some candy in there if you wanted to to make it a prize egg. Um, the other thing that uh, was Christy was mentioning earlier when she said my other favorite ball is not out here is uh, we forgot to bring out, but we have the uh, there are beeping footballs. So uh, they also have footballs with bells inside of them. Uh, but we have a beeping foam football that we play with as a family out in the backyard, tossing it around and that sort of thing. So it's a really neat thing. And it works much like the uh, beeping soccer ball. Uh, it has a toggle inside, or um, yeah, a toggle inside that you just flip and it, it will make a pretty good amount of noise. So, yeah. all right, so what else you got over there? All right, so this is a small uh, sound block. It's really, I don't even know, two inches? Maybe three, yeah. And it, it's just a square rectangular <laughs> thing that has a little toggle switch on the end of it that you can use as a locator type thing. Um, we would use this for like a, a capture the flag where, you know, the one participant that's, or tag, um, the person who's it would be the one that wears this so that the other people know where they're at. Or um, at least just, puts it in their pocket. Right. Yeah. Something like that to give you an idea of what we would use for that. All right. Yeah. All right. Here we go, Ricky. You want to go with this one? And I'm going to, while you talk about that, I'm going to step over here to this base. So with kickball or baseball, softball, you have to have bases. Um, and with the adaptation of kickball, um, baseball that's for people with visual impairments, we have these really cool uh, four foot tall foam bases just like the ball. These things are made for you to be able to tackle them, to just knock them over, um, really run out and have a blast with playing kickball and stuff. And it has a toggle box that comes with it that um, there's first base and third base. No second base. No second base. And the um, catcher, the person that would normally be the catcher, the umpire, um, it has this toggle box and they will flip either to the first base or third base. And that's where the runner will run to is one of those bases. Yeah, you don't have to works. you don't have to run in between the bases. You don't have to run but to one base, whichever one is beeping. Um, and the outfielders cannot come into the into past the bases. So um, they and can't the beeps, come into the infield. Yeah, and the beeps are different for the base from the oh, ball. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. That type thing too to kind of give people an idea of you know they're listening for different sounds. Yeah, so the bases are a solid uh, buzz, a real solid buzz, and then the the kickball you've already heard is um is a just beeping a beeping cadence. Yeah, yeah, cadence. All right, so what I have here is a help me remember the name. Um, Sound Source Pro. Pro. Yeah, it's like a or sport something. Like sport that. edition. Yeah. So this is a uh, let's it's a. Rectangular box. It has on the back of it 
a place you can put a strap inside of it, uh, it two, two brackets to hold it with the strap. Um, you can use it with strap or you can just lay it down and, and like that. But um, this box has a control for volume for, uh, now that I'm going to try to remember, I won't, <laughs> tone and for um, rate. rate. That's correct. It has a flip top on the top of it. It has the uh, button to turn it on. And so let's see. If my batteries aren't dead, I think I left it on, Christy. Oh, no. Yeah. Anyone will try it? We're having a malfunction. Oh, thank goodness. There we go. So you flip this button up at the top, and then you hit the power button, the circle at the far, uh, depending on how you're holding it. <laughs> yeah, if it's... If it's Facing away from me is the top left. Uh, so then, like I said, we have the volume, uh, which are just arrows. These are all tactual and have braille on them. So uh, let's see. Let me find the volume. Do, do, do. Okay, so. It's pretty loud. And I can make it pretty soft. Outside voice, inside voice. Keep in mind when you're using something like this, especially for a target area, you want to make sure that you are uh, very mindful of the uh, echo that may be if you're in a gymnasium or that sort of thing. All right, so tone. Turn it up just a little bit. And with the tone... Very loud pitch. Or low pitch. Okay, so let's bring it back up a little bit. Okay, and then we can change the rate. Oh, that's going the wrong way, right? So it gets faster. And we get it going pretty fast. And uh, I can do any combination of these things. So I'm going to turn it down here. Turn down the rate a little bit so I don't go crazy. This thing's pretty loud when you're holding it right in your hand. Um, this could be again, again be played for tag purposes. If you had the um, the um, strap and you put it around your neck. This could be put into a soccer goal uh, to determine what where you're supposed to be kicking for the goal. Uh, it could go on the back of a basketball uh, um, rim. Um, all those things to, to mark a target. We'll show you an example here in just a second. Um, but we also have with this device one thing that's really yeah, great. Okay. I didn't bring it out. No. Okay. Well, I this, still get it. No, it's okay. I mean, okay. This comes with a remote. So you can bring, get a remote for this. That way, if you've got in, let's say you've got two of these, uh, you can put one in the so one end of the soccer field and the other in another, or have two different targets that you're going for. And this will uh, be an excellent source for you to, um, with, the, with the remotes, to switch in between what sounds going off so that, Maybe it helps people with orientation a little bit better. But um, you want to go ahead and show the example, and then we'll come back to do, because there's a tactual that we, we need to get to tactual and some other things here. Yeah. Okay. So let me show you real quick how this works, uh, a use for it. You can use any of these beeping sources that we gave you. But uh, we, one of the activities you can do is uh, disc golf. And disc golf has a basket that you would... Um, Try to shoot the disc, the frisbee, if you will. Let's see, got one right here. So we're going to shoot a disc into this basket. It's already got a chain on it to let me know if I hit it like that, and then it'll drop into the basket. So that's going to be an auditory cue right there. That's already built into this 
uh, thing. But if I had this sound source, and let's just say for purposes we'll have it a little louder, but I'm gonna put it on the back side of the basket, and then I'll give Christy the disc. Where you have? I'm behind you, I didn't oh. know you needed me to. I'll just let you be my little assistant. Okay, what am I doing? You'll just aim for the target. in one. So that's a great example of how you can use some of these audio, uh, auditory, well, let's get it pretty quiet. There we go. Auditory um, boxes, or I could put the beat baseball in here um, if I didn't have money to purchase one of these. I can get a beat baseball since I've already maybe I already have it. Or one of these small little sounds. Or one of the small sticks. Small sticks. Yep. Yeah. So those are all options. I'm just bouncing off everything. All right. So we've talked about audio contrast. Uh, let's talk now about tactual. There are uh, we, in our example earlier we were talking about using tactual markings on floors to mark boundaries and those type things. So we have an example of that right here. Uh, I'm hoping you can see it with the camera. So what we've done is we put uh, a piece of string, a cord. You can use clothesline cord. You can use twine. Um, some, Fishing line yeah. works really good. Um, you can use all kinds of... Uh, weed eater cord. That weed eater cord, that's that what we're... cheaper one. Yeah. Yeah. Weed eater cord. So, uh, it doesn't have to be really thick, or it could be thick, depending on your need. Um, a lot of people, we always get, well, that's going to be a tripping hazard. It really isn't, um, because if you're using something so big that it's a tripping hazard, then um, you're probably not... Uh, using it correctly or doing it right. But I, most of the time, smaller things like this are very, uh, they're there and you can feel them, but they're not really much of a tripping hazard. But we have here in the first example, just a single line. Um, and then down here, I've kind of tried to give you an example of a double line that you might use. Now the tape we're using, you can buy different kinds of tape, gymnasium tape sizes. You can get the Two inch Which or is the this. This is the this is the one inch. Sorry. What is what were the you? The tape is the two inch, isn't it? Uh, this is two. the yes. This is the two inch. Yeah. So they and I think you can get one, one inch. Two and three I, is, is what it three I've or seen. four? Yeah. Um, and then uh, so these are things that you can use again to make tactual markings. Um, we don't have uh, with us, and our equipment locker is uh, not with us right now, but. Our, we have things like uh, tactual dice. Uh, we have there are things out there you can get for board and card games. You can get already uh, raised, lined, and braille board games such as Monopoly and Scrabble and all those things. So keep that in mind as well. Those are things that are already pre-done for you. Definitely. Or you can use things like puff paint, uh, pipe cleaners, and glue. Uh, to turn a regular board game that you bought from your local box store and, and put it into, uh, into an adaptive board game. So those are all great things as well. So those are examples of Taxual. Um, so now next we're going to talk a little bit about what we know about verbal. So verbal is, again, where we're talking and giving good directions. Um, yeah, so a good example of that would be... So we have a stretch band here. If Ricky had a stretch band, you mean exercise? <laughs> and you know, the person was to tell him, put it under your feet or foot, your right foot, put your both hands into the handles and pull your arms straight up in front of you, bending your elbows, um, making palms sure facing. palms facing up towards the sky. Um, making sure that you're not overdoing giving them information, but um, giving them enough. Giving them enough. Yeah, and there as is we, a balance there. Yeah, so. as we talked about, there are 
you know, you can give too much uh, verbalization, but good direction. Another thing that you can use, give her a little tether. That's so, more caring, oh, it is. Okay, never mind. We'll wait on that. Okay, so next we were talking about uh, modeling. You know, there's one thing that we haven't shown though that before we go to modeling, I'd like to bring out. Okay. Um, can we bring out Baccia? Sure. Yeah. So Baccia. This would be more tactile, actually. Yeah. So okay. Baccia uh, is a sport that was actually um, developed for people with physical disabilities or limited mobility in, in their arms and upper body, um, that where they can still play a sport that uh, meets their needs. And so uh, it, there's also a visually impaired division of it. The option, uh, the object of the game is to take the white ball, which is a, called the jack. The balls are made out of, is this fine? Am I saying that correct? I don't know, because the ball I have feels different. Oh, okay. I have the shine ball. Okay, so they're made out of some different uh, material, but they're like a it's huge like over, hacky sack. Yeah, it's an oversized. Uh, Bee bag, hacky sack, go back to the 80s, 90s. <laughs> um, we'll bring it back. Uh, but anyway, so these balls are, um, they've got, you know, the priest, uh, stiff, they've got... They have different weights. They have soft and hard balls. Not different weights. Um, I actually think they do have different weights, too. A little bit. There's a medium, a soft, and a hard. So they're, they have different... Uh, that helps them go to different uh, distances. Right. Depending or, on the ball or, or slide. Slide or bounce. So anyway, let me get back to the, how the game's played. Sorry. Um, the jack is thrown out by the... the the home team, and then the object of the game is for the teams to get their colored balls as close to the jack without, or with, as close to the jack as possible. Um, and so the other team, if let's say I throw it and I get it right next to the to the jack, and Christy throws it, um, then she can try and get it to where. Um, she is right up, uh, maybe she knocks mine out of the way and now she's there. Or she moves the jack and gets closer by that way. So it's all strategy and all that good stuff. Um, like any good game. <laughs> some, yeah, so, any, so some of the things you can do there is you can have somebody standing over the jack, clapping, and then step back out of the way. Or you could put one of these, uh, the beeping stick, um, at the jack. You could also um, use gym ta gymnasium tape with string to kind of outline the court. And Christy has what this they... This is a tactile finger grid. Yep. So it's laid out as the court would be. And so once a person has learned the course, I mean the court, how it's laid out, you could just tell them, you know, two blocks up in the three over or some along those lines to give the person and there's little pegs that you can stick in this board so that you can they can refer back to it to see where all the balls are yeah so this is um, this is a very neat thing that they offer at USA Baccia um, great folks we we worked um, with them got some training and other things with them so these this is a great activity it's a great sport and um, they, they go ahead and help you with uh, making things attachable. So, um, okay, so let's go to modeling. So we talked about with modeling that, uh, tactile modeling, we want to allow the person in a respectful way to be able to feel our motions, our movement, uh, so that they can get down the same movement maybe with their body. So um, we want to give you an example of that uh, do we have the basketball? We do. Do you want to step over this box? Sure. Um, you want to follow me? I'll go around this way and meet you. Okay. All right, so I'm right here. Okay, so if I was the basketball coach and I'm wanting to teach Christy how to get in a shooting position, or I want to teach her, let's start first off with how to hold the ball with the laces going across her body. So I could, I could tell her, 
Christy, reach up uh, in front of you with the ball is, you hear it jingling, and feel my hand placement on the ball. I have a, a hand underneath it. I have the one I want you to focus on is my right hand, which is with my fingers on, if you'll follow up to my fingers. Now you're feeling the laces. All right. So I'm breaking down the movement of how to hold the ball to shoot the ball, right? She's able to feel that. Now, if I go to show her the shooting stance, which is bending my knees um, and placing the ball uh, in my palm with my fingers up towards the sky, she can now feel not only my hand placement, I've got a ball, a hand holding the side of the ball in place, my hand movement there, and then you may move down my body on the outside, please, to feel... No, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Through this side, so yeah. I can... And come down to feel my hips and my knee. So now she understands a little bit better of the movement that now I want her to mimic back. So if I give her the ball and say, will you please get in a shooting stance? <laughs> there you go. So she's able to model it so, uh, or, or mimic it. So that's, that's what we're meaning by uh, modeling. So, um, all right, so next is our pairing. And with pairing, we've talked about earlier in, uh, in our example, one of the examples we talked about was the running, uh, running with a guide, uh, run, walk, whatever you wish to do. Um, and so one of the tools we use for that is a tether. This is a, just a simply a shoestring or a, a rope that we have tied on both ends a loop in to the string. And if Christy and I are going to act like we're a running team here, um, she's going to take it and put it, you want the bigger end? Or? Oh, I'm good with the little end. Okay, so she's putting the, the loop on her end of the rope around her fingers. I'm doing the same here. And we learned I, earlier that we actually do it a little bit differently. Uh, because the loop on this end is a little smaller, I'm only using three fingers, but normally, I have all four of my fingers. She likes all four. In it. Yep, and I just like two. Yeah. Um, it's just a comfort level. It doesn't matter. But with this example, uh, what we're going to do with pairing is we're we're buddy buddy here, but I still have my independence to run as a totally blind runner, and I will have um, the freedom to kind of move a little bit back and forth. But if Christy's my guide. She's keeping her hands solid so that if I veer, which I do as a runner, um, then I kind of understand, okay, this is my boundary. I can't go any further. Uh, so this is a great example of pairing. Um, and what else should we tell them about this? Is there any, oh, uh, the length. Um, uh, you, you've got to figure really out. It depends on the person. Yeah, it, it depends on the team a little bit. But I will say that something really long is too much. Is too much. Yeah. So you want to keep it a safe distance. If you're so close that your elbows are bump to bump and you have no more cord, then um, it's probably not long enough. I would say this is about 10 to 12 inches long. Um, I'm horrible on, on links, so that might be wrong. But uh, the one of the things, if you get it longer than you need, you can always roll your hand um, underneath it and grab a little bit of it to make it shorter. So what I've done well, is... you don't really want your fingers caught up in it in case a fall. Or I, well, I've got it in my palm is uh -huh. what I've got. Uh -huh. yeah. And I, yeah, you're right. But I've got it in my palm just to make it a little tighter. It's just a, a way you could do it. But you want to try to play with it to figure out what works. And then as the pair, the guide is going to tell you, hey, and... Um, May. 50, well, no. <laughs> 50 yards. Uh, we have an incline that's about 20 degrees high. and They may tell you that. They may. They could. <laughs> if that's the information you want. Again, we're going back to verbal. Uh, they're going to tell you left turns, right turns, that sort of thing. So it's, it's, it's kind of a combination of both verbal and pairing. And pairing can be in, done in lots of things. Um, it's been done in swimming. Uh, Tandem cycling, obviously. I've, I've seen it done in <laughs> canoeing. Yeah, canoeing, kayaking. Um, um, if you can walk. So if if I had, if Christy, with having partial vision, as we talked about earlier, we could put a 
bright shirt on the guide, and the guide could run in front of Christy. Oh, no. Uh, well, oh, okay. No. Not, not your brother. Okay. Not me. So, all right. So, the scenario <laughs> of a higher partial, um, possible uh, higher vision functioning person uh, probably could use the contrasting with the guide, but it's still pairing because there's a partner there with them. Um, in the school setting, walking around the gymnasium with a partner, or if out in the park, we do the sighted guide, uh, human guide, however you want to say it, um, hand above the elbow, all that good stuff. You can do that, but please never ever, uh, or at least we will not promote running with uh, the sighted guide or human guide method and specifically, I just feel like it's very important to say this, never run with a cane. It's just not safe. It's, it's especially fully extended. Um, okay, so we've went through all the six approaches. Uh, now it's time to move on to some of the um, community and national opportunities that you have to get involved in activities. And so we'll go back to our PowerPoint and start talking about those different types of opportunities. Okay. Hope you enjoy.